special group of enthusiasts who spend their lives storm chasing. And we're joined now by two of them, Mark Humpage and his mate Stuart Robinson, who got back from Texas where he was chasing Hurricane Rita just this morning. Also here is climate expert Dr. Eleanor Parker to explain why these storms are getting more and more frequent and more and more destructive. But uh, first, hello to you. You, hello. you dashed back. You, you'd only just come back from America, hadn't you? And you dashed straight back. That's right. I've just come. Uh, just flown in literally on the first flight from Houston to London this morning. Yeah. And you've brought, you've brought some film with you? Yes, I've brought some film there to show yeah. you. Well, let's have a look. Well, this look is you, you tell us what's going on. This is the aftermath, isn't it? It, it is indeed, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Here we've got uh, some plenty of tree damage. This is in the uh, town of uh, Beaumont, which was just north of where the, uh, the hur centre of the hurricane made landfall. Mm -hmm. There was extensive damage to trailers, uh, brick buildings, uh, cars. There's a car that's been rolled. There's a trailer behind that's been rolled right. There's one on its roof uh, mm. uh, that we found. There's some fairly typical building damage wow. that the winds have uh, caused and general mayhem uh, throughout the entire, uh, the entire town. The, the hurricane was actually really quite intense. The town took some of the strongest winds that the, uh, the hurricane actually produced. Uh, I thought we had some footage of you, um, with a, uh, there was a guy on a skateboard holding an umbrella over right, being yeah. pulled along. It always amazes me. Uh, every hurricane I've chased, I always see something that really sticks in my mind. And, and this one, out of the blue, just as the hurricane winds are really getting strong, from nowhere a guy just produced a skateboard opened an umbrella in front of him and allowed himself to be pulled along at some, mental, some really strong right. speed down the street on his skateboard. Presumably you, you two do get frightened from time to time. I mean, I, I know you say it. Very much so, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you had to spend the night in pitch darkness, didn't yeah. you? There was yeah. no food because all, all the shops had closed yeah. and evacuated. So, I mean, you, 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 yeah. you go right into it. I must admit, uh, I was actually in the eye of uh, Hurricane Rita. And it was, um, that's a good bit though, isn't it? That is the bit that we aim for, <laughs> the storm chaser, that's yeah. the bit that we aim for. But yeah. the, the winds either side of the eye, as, as you know, are very intense. Yeah. And um, at one stage, as the, just as the eye was approaching, the winds were building and building, and that was probably for the first time under a storm that I've actually thought to myself, well, perhaps you've bitten off more than you can chew here, Stuart. Well, let's have a look at Katrina. We got, we got yeah. some of the footage from space. This was the big one, of course, because Rita was, uh, it was downgraded to a three, wasn't it? Um, Rita, oh, yeah. of course, oh, Katrina rather was a five. And that's the eye you're talking about. Can you, can you describe to me? When, when you, the eye approaches you and you say the winds intensify and they are at the most strongest and then the eye crosses overhead, how quickly do the winds drop? How quickly does it go ca dead calm? Well, they don't actually go dead calm. Right. They sort of go from anywhere of 120 mile an hour, probably down to 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. But the eye is generally rain free. So around the centre of the eye, you've got torrential, torrential rainfall in the, in the centre of the eye. There's no rain at all. And oh, actually, no. it's, it's, it's reasonably quiet. Blue sky? Often blue sky, often just a little bit of cloud. Oh, you've, got, you've brought us some, some mm. amazing footage, actually, of stuff that you've seen in America. Um, yes. And, um, in fact, we can see it. We don't even need to talk over it because I think it's absolutely self It speaks for itself. Yeah. You're very strange human beings, the two of you, because most <laughs> people, if, if you see a tornado on the horizon, every instinct, common sense tells you to turn the car around and go the other way. I mean, you should really head away from it because they're killers. Uh, ditto hurricanes. Hurricane comes in, leave town. Sure. Um, why do you do it? Why do you act actively go and seek them out? And does the thrill ever, ever diminish? Do you ever, does, it ever, you, does it lose its edge? A number of reasons. Uh, I'm mad passionate about the weather. Uh, the more severe, the, the better in terms of that. And yeah. I think... Um, from somebody who has a passion, whether it's um, climbing mountains or, or even chasing storms, yeah. it's not a case of just wanting to watch and see video. You want to experience, and um, and this is part do and parcel of what you want to do. you feel guilty, uh, but either of you, because obviously, mm. if, if, you're, if you go, if you fly out, yeah, you, you know sure. that say Katrina's coming in, and mm. you fly out there with your camera and stuff. Yeah. You also know that a lot of people are going to die. Does it feel a little odd? to be wanting to experience something which is going to be killing other people. I'm not having a go, I'm just No, no, very much so. I've, yeah. um, I've played with this on my conscience quite a, a number of times. Um, but we, we do actually form part, and we, we are active in what we do when we go over to the US and chase yeah. these tornadoes or hurricanes, yeah. particularly the tornadoes in the plains. The technology in the United States is such that um, the, the forecasts that are issued by the National Weather Service are based upon the technology and the radar. 
these tornadoes can only be spotted on the ground mm -hmm. by, by humans, by people. Mm -hmm. And we do form part of that network of spotters that mm -hmm. help so feed that the information yeah, like, to the emergency services. So we've got a, 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 we a picture of a supercell. Which, oh, yeah. Did you take this? Yes. That's, that's a, incredible. That was in Oklahoma in uh, May what 2002. Can explain? A supercell is uh, effectively uh, the king of thunderstorms. Um, and it, it's, it's, it involves a lot of wind that goes, it's what's called inflow and outflow. Mm. Uh, and the whole um, storm itself is huge. It can be hundreds of miles wide mm. in terms of the energy that's in involved. So how in far are you things. from that when you took that picture? Um, probably a couple of hundred yards. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I mean, there is this perception, certainly, you know, this year, our, our climate generally it seems to be getting more and more extreme and more and more destructive. I mean, there are no, I know the tornado season is different from the mm. hurricane season, but the hurricane season lasts through until um, November. November, November, isn't it? Time. So there's, there's quite possibly still more to come. Why do experts like yourself, why, why do you think this is happening? Is it, is it the old global warming? Oh, it's, uh, it's difficult to say, um, the honest answer is. There's a lot of evidence uh, from past records, historical records and geological records from uh, sediments from ice cores that show that climate has fluctuated in the past on scales of millions of years and thousands of years. But there's also evidence that climate fluctuates on perhaps hundreds of years and tens of years. Mm -hmm. mm. So we've got this, this cycle of slightly warmer, slightly cooler, slightly warmer, slightly cooler, and perhaps there is evidence that that baseline, these fluctuations that go up and down, are actually on an upward slope. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, 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 the proper data collecting records with satellites and radar that these guys are working with have only really existed in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you've got cycles that are 30 years, mm -hmm. you've got to wait for another 30, 60, 90 years before we can actually see any significant because changes. Because we, we, we can look at something like this extraordinary Category 5 hurricane, Katrina, that hit America, the biggest in history, in known, in known history. Um, yeah. They thought that, that Rita was going to be the same, and it just, just, just edged under that, but it could have been. Um, as Judy says, they could well be more monster hurricanes. They're if, talking if, about hurricane, um, hurricanes in uh, New York, aren't they? I was just about to say, if, if, if the predictions are to be believed, as Judy says, we're, we're, we're about to see in possibly this season or the next, a hurricane hit New York. Now, have you read those reports and what do you make of it? I have seen those reports. It's, it's certainly feasible that extreme weather um, uh, is likely to affect areas further up the coast of the United States, whether they're specifically hurricanes or whether they've changed into rainstorms and front frontal rainstorms mm. as they've moved away from that warm water. Hurricanes need that 26.5 degrees worth of sea surface temperature, and as we get slightly warmer years, then we've got warmer mm. sea temperatures for longer, so the season is longer and the chance of you getting either more or just the same number intense mm -hmm. uh, hurricanes is could, could we get Could we get that here as well? We are likely to see the tail end. These guys were telling me earlier that we're like, we always see the tail end. So when this warm air meets our cooler air, mm -hmm. we often get, get uh, extremes yeah. of weather. But we're also likely to see um, uh, some incidents of extreme weather of our own. We've already seen examples. Mm, Boss Castle last time. Boss Castle, the Carlisle floods earlier this year, yeah. those sorts of things. But it's important to remember that our memories are really quite short. So we had uh, extreme flooding around London in 1953, which killed 60 people just on Canvey Island. Mm. Let's not be too complacent about the fact that we've got the Thames barrier. Um, if we have storm surges that coincide with uh, spring high tides, for mm -hmm. example, there is a chance, however remote it could be, that we could be in a situation like New Orleans. And not just London, but up, up the East Coast. All the dikes, the, the dams, because a lot of a exactly. lot of East Anglia is below sea oh, level, just oh, like New Orleans. All the, all the way up that side. Very, very quickly, it's actually just a question that, that I don't know why this has been nagging at me, but when you get a couple of massive hurricanes moving through the Gulf of Mexico and on to, in, into America, does that kind of take out some of the energy? Is, does it make it less likely you'll get a big one a month later? Not necessarily. No. I think there's, no, there's not enough statistical evidence, really, okay. if we're just going to go on recurrence intervals to prove that that's the case. Well, guys, stay uh, safe. And uh, that footage, by the way, was extraordinary. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah it really was. Really amazing, amazing footage. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you might have